now it's time for our TV 101, where we discuss practical questions to equip you to share your faith more effectively. And here to help me talk about a very common question on the early chapters of Genesis is Dr. Fuzz Rana. Welcome back, Fuzz. Krista, thanks. Now, one of our distinguishing features here at Reasons to Believe is that we actually interpret the early chapters of Genesis, Genesis chapters 1 through 11, as being real history. Maybe start off with a little discussion about that. Yeah, sure. Well, a lot of people will take the view that Genesis 1 through 11 are mythical or allegorical, but we, as you said, take the view that this is a real description of historical events that took place. But I like to refer to Genesis 1 through 11 as compressed history. In other words, it's, it, these are real historical events that took place that are juxtaposed to one another in a chronological manner. But it doesn't mean that there wasn't other things going on that the Bible is silent about uh, and, and that events that may be separated in time may actually be very close together. But still, nevertheless, even though we do view it as compressed history, it is real history. Okay, so with that in place, then what, there is a, a very curious feature of those early chapters in Genesis of long ages. We see lists of people and genealogies living for hundreds of years, even 900 years. So do you take those uh, ages to be real numbers, real lifespans, or do you see those as being more symbolic? Uh, I see them as being literal, as being real lifespans. And I know that there are some biblical scholars who argue that those uh, lifespans are symbolic. One idea is that uh, there are these sacred numbers that were used in the ancient Near East and that those lifespans are mathematical combinations of those sacred numbers. But when I've looked into that particular view, I've never found it overly compelling, though interesting, not compelling. And so to me, I don't know how else to read those lifespans other than that they literally are true. Okay, so with with the idea that they are true, now my mind is sort of reeling because I'm trying to make sense of it from a scientific point of view. Is that even possible to live 900 years? Well, you know, for a lot of people, that idea is seems to be absurd, but yet there are some recent advances that have happened in the biology of aging that actually make those long lifespans suddenly seem to be credible. We really have a good understanding now of the biochemistry and the physiology of the aging process to the point where there are biomedical researchers who think that we can medically intervene and either slow down or even arrest or perhaps even reverse the aging process. Uh, Some researchers argue that we need to think about aging not as an inevitability of our humanity, but actually a disease. And if we treat aging as a disease, it means there's ways to treat it, ways to cure it. Wow, that's a completely different way of thinking about it. So what would be some of the options that might have been available at that point that would have facilitated these hundreds of years of lifespan? Well, I mean, people have done some very interesting work with laboratory organisms. And so, for example, by increasing the activity of certain proteins that play a role in our antioxidant system, against defending our bodies against the damaging effects of oxidants, uh, you can actually increase lifespans by 30 to 40%. If you inhibit the activity of another group of enzymes called sirtuins, again, you can increase life expectancy by 30 or 40%. Nobody's quite sure if these two effects are related or they're independent, but this is, this is rather significant, and this now opens up the possibility that we could do something similar to humans. In fact, there was a, a study done just recently, a small-scale clinical study, where researchers found out by administering growth hormone that they could actually reverse the aging process. This study took place over the span of a year, so when the year was done, the participants were one year older chronologically, but when they measured their biological age, they discovered that their, their age has act, had actually reversed by two years. They were actually biologically two years younger. This is the first time we've ever seen this kind of effect take place. So all this is to say that uh, eventually we may have the, the medical technology to actually stop aging and maybe even extend life expectancy in humans to be hundreds of years. So now tying it back to scripture, what I think you might be saying is that 
there are some tweaks, if you will, in the biology that could happen that could facilitate long lifespans. So maybe God did something that sort of altered that biology that lifespans started reducing, but we were actually originally intended to live for a long time. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Uh, I mean, this is speculation, of course, but you could easily envision the creator creating humanity with a certain type of biochemistry that facilitated life expectancy on the order of hundreds of years. And then at, after the time of the flood where God d decrees that he's going to shorten lifespans to intervene and alter our biochemistry in such a way that those long lifespans no longer are sustained. So in other words, those long lifespans do have uh, scientific legitimacy. Well, it seems like an interesting approach. I can imagine a potential objection might be from our young earth friends that they would say, well, that's just kind of special pleading. You're just all of a sudden inserting God as a creator, changing things. Couldn't he have done that with other things like making herbivores into carnivores after the fall? Yeah, well, the, the point I would make in response to that, that potential objection would be that when we look at scripture, it's very clear that the initial state that humanity was created in was to have life expectancy on the order of hundreds of years. And there's a very clear statement in Genesis 6 where God is intervening to shorten life expectancy. So what we're doing is speculating on what might God have done mechanistically to achieve that. But I don't see anything in scripture that actually says that there were animals that were only created as herbivores, that there were no carnivores at the original point of creation, nor do I see anything in scripture that says God intervened to convert herbivores into carnivores. This is all an inference that I think is imported into scripture. It's not something that we find in scripture itself. Now, when you've used this approach in a public presentation and talked about these issues, what do you find non-Christians, how do they respond to this? Does this make them think? Are they open to it? Are they just, that's silly. Well, you know, I, I think what it does do is gives us, a, I think, a, a really good response to the skeptic who just says, there's no way I can embrace the Bible because of the, the things that I see in Genesis 1 to 11, like the long lifespans. And in my experience, nobody disputes these advances that are happening in the biology of aging and the, the prospects of increasing life expectancy on the order of hundreds of years. Everybody sees that as possible. It, it's, it, and so I think oftentimes people are surprised to, when they see that these kinds of advances are being connected back to, to Genesis 1 through 11. But again, if, if, if we can extend life expectancy for hundreds of years, why couldn't the creator have done that originally? Very good. Well, very thought provoking, giving us some things to think about. I want to encourage you to go check out Fuzz's blog. Search for The Cells Design at reasons.org.